Before this video starts, I would like to quickly remind everyone that if you are watching this on Tuesday morning, August 24th, I will probably be live streaming the Bungie announcement of the Witch Queen and playing next season. So if you want to watch that and you want to see what I think, that's the best place to find it. Enjoy the video. Seasonal content. Everyone's favorite form of content, right? Well, not me. Welcome to the very first review for my channel. So you're probably wondering, why the name Egg Scrambler? Why reviews? We're doing new things on the channel. And, well, yeah. Anyways, Season of the Splicer has now officially come to a close, and while the Destiny community awaits the next season on August 24th, I figured it was a good time for a look back into what made the Season of the Splicer good or bad, whether we wanted it or not. I think it's fair to say spoiler warning now, so I don't get yelled at later on about it. So, uh, spoilers incoming, and let's get this thing going. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as music too. The subscriber that changed all of YouTube forever. Now, that could be you, but you chose not to subscribe, and you chose not to hit the bell. Wow. Just, wow. Anyways, for the rest of the chads who sub with the bell on, enjoy the video. Let's start with the meat and potatoes of the Season of the Splicer. Or rather, the lack thereof in some people's opinions. That's right, I'm going to be including your opinions from Twitter into this review. Season of the Splicer launched on May 11th and left a bad taste in PC players' mouths. Well, that was if you had over 25 friends on Steam at the time. This bug would crash players' games every time they tried to get past the loading screen. Bungie's solution? Just delete your friends list. I'm sorry everyone on Steam. Once that awful bug was out of the way, the seasonal content was... Well, it was okay. Override came out to be 6 player gambit with not enough enemies to keep up with 6 players, but the second half of Override is something I would call a pretty great time. Using platforming and boss fights with some pretty light mechanics and a guaranteed chest at the end was a nice touch. Even nicer? That loot goblin some people would see to get upgrades. This event would get some new faces on the moon, and even with the final mission in the last city, but more on that later. I feel like Override is another example of an activity fitting into the seasonal model, and while I commend the development team at Bungie for pushing out the content for the players, I also feel like this content is just there to tread in water, and not there to swim. I don't think after I played this activity for a couple of days, I was excited to jump back in the way I was for the Menagerie or Sundial. And that is a big issue for Bungie to tackle, because if the seasonal content isn't hooking players for the season, they're gonna leave that season pretty quickly. You guys on Twitter seem to agree with this across the board, and yes, I said I did include your reply in this review. Hunts didn't stick, Battlegrounds didn't stick, and now I don't think Override will stick. Hopefully next season breaks the mold with all of this. Speaking of breaking the mold, Bungie released a new stasis exotic weapon in the form of a primary sidearm named Cryosthesia, and it was stasis. That's about it. Not really anything too powerful, but I commend the primary weapon slot having more elemental affinities. Alright, so week two. Vault of Glass made a pretty damn triumphant return. You guys know how I feel about this one if you watch my raid video about it, but just in case you didn't, I think this is a pretty solid remaster. It makes me wonder if this is what Bungie can do with the Vault of Glass. Imagine what a King's Fall would look like with a facelift. How about Crota as a dungeon? Or a fully realized raid? Wrath of the... No, that one's perfect. You know what wasn't perfect, though? Stasis. Yeah, who would have thought that making abilities around slowing the player down in a game where space wizards throw bombs at each other wouldn't be powerful? Stasis received a volley of hate in PvP, and that was before the new hunter aspect for the season of the splicer allowed for hunters to have an even stronger shatter dive, an even stronger dust field nade, an even stronger cold snap grenade. The community reacted the way I think you would expect them to. With open arms, hugs, and kisses.
Bungie would push a nerf to stasis across the board in response to the uproar of frustration from the PvP community, who got sick of adapting and instead wanted to not live in the Ice Age. This update, as Eric Smith explained, was supposed to be for Season 15, but because of how vocal the community was about the changes needed, was pushed in Season 14 instead. My opinion? I think I'm going to let Cynical Evan talk on this one. Hey guys, Cynical Evan here, here to tell you that I think there's a committed team on the development side of Bungie that may not get a say when it comes to the decision making. And it feels more to me like Stasis was shipped in the state it was to get people to spend money on Beyond Light. Similar to how Forsaken handled exotics because as we learned with the One-Eyed Mask, if you can't beat them, join them. Those new exotic Titan boots didn't get any use after these changes either. So speaking of exotics, I made a video on the second channel where we melted raid bosses with the Star Eater scale boots, and those were a real fear going into day one Vault of Glass, especially against Atheon. So the boots were disabled for that raid and then nerfed hard not that long after. It was a good ride season of the Splicer boots, but the Warlock boots are the best of the bunch now that these are nerfed, and stasis nerfs make these not necessary anymore. We got expunged this season, and yeah, I did use that as a verb, because according to Google, it is a verb, so Destiny used it in a weird way by using it as a noun. Basically, we went to the helm, did an override, then we went directly into the Vex network, doing parkour, puzzle solving, and mechanics to beat whatever boss was that week, with little spritz of story sprinkled in here and there. This Vex network is dripping with atmosphere, and some of the week's challenges were no joke. I can't imagine the amount of work that went into making these areas and challenges. This is the quality of arenas and platforming you'd see out of the Whisper of the Worm in Zero Hour. However, I do have one thing I'm not too big on for this type of content, and I hope it goes away, because to me, it's actively hurting the story Bungie is trying to tell. Drip feed. Listen, there are hundreds of videos I'm sure discussing this, and the normal counter argument to whenever somebody says drip feed isn't good is, well, do you really want content droughts for Destiny again, like the Taken King? Well, yeah, I would if there isn't enough content to sustain this model. Look, I'm not alone on this thought either, with a lot of you guys saying this season got boring really quickly. And I want to stress to all of you watching that I liked this format in Forsaken because there was almost always something to go with that week's game. But Bungie isn't partnered with Activision anymore, so the means of keeping this model is very hard no doubt, but I think we will always remember slaying Oryx, stopping Aldrin, and beating Aramis way over expository dialogue every Tuesday while running a mission. I tried to figure out what I didn't particularly like with this model, and for me, it just simply comes down to the pacing. I can't get connected to the story and its characters when every Tuesday it feels like I'm doing chores to hear a scene of one episode of TV instead of an episode of a larger season. I get that Bungie's focus is to be the best story told live service game, but this drip feed model really does hurt the story Bungie is trying to tell in my opinion. Need an example of why? Look at how many times Iron Banner is listed on the season pass. It wasn't all bad though. Korea. Korea had us playing Bungie's version of the Hole in the Wall game show with a pretty difficult finale for Solo Flawless. The week after was a big week for Bungie though. Master Vault of Glass came out and I thought it was a pretty damn good time with some solid challenge to it. But I also didn't save bounties, I didn't do a ton of seasonal challenges, and I didn't have a macro set up for the Thrallway either. Master Vogue was for the players who sought the challenge that regular Vault of Glass lost after contest mode was lifted. But it used artifact power for the difficulty, which is something I feel like a lot of players aren't a fan of. To be honest, I have no clue what to say here. I like the challenge it presented, I don't like how the weapons and title for this was time gated, and I find it weird that the time loss weapons can be bought for 25 spoils when they guarantee 4 perks on the weapon. The only fear I have for this execution is that players will just do this once and then not touch it until it's time to grab another time loss weapon next week. 
That, and I fear normal mode's rules will now have no point for someone that plays the hardest content. But I am very happy that a hard mode does exist. Players have been asking for it since the day it disappeared, and I wondered what hard mode would look like in some of the other raids. LFG might explode if Riven had to be killed the way Bungie designed that boss to be. Solstice of Heroes also happened. That's cool. Even cooler, this cat. But that doesn't say much, since it hasn't changed since Forsaken. The only reason it's the best of the seasonal events is because it's the only time players can earn an armor set for just playing the event instead of buying it for silver. Much like the seasons though, we move on to the next one. All right, so the final week of Destiny 2 Season of the Splicers content. This was where players got to see Robot Lady die. Or not really, did they? In a weird way, Factions and Lakshmi both died through dialogue and not showing. This character was ruthless and definitely the season's villain aside from Kuria. and probably Osiris. But Lakshmi dying off screen was not the payoff that I wanted for this much buildup. Never a fan of killing characters off screen, but at least we could see her corpse, I guess. I personally think that the final mission in the last city would have been awesome had Coria been the final kill after Lakshmi died here. Us fighting alongside Mithrax, Zavala, Ikora, Amanda Holiday, and Saint 14 all together, but instead, it was just override in a new place. I've seen what Bungie can do with missions in the seasonal content before, and to me, this was a disappointing finale. Even more disappointing, but not surprising, was Ikora just straight up telling us factions are now gone in a sentence. Hey, Cynical Evan back again. Maybe Lakshmi was the villain who had to die, so Bungie finally had a reason to have Dead Orbit, New Monarchy, and Future War Cult gone for good. So, with all that being said, that is the season of the Splicer. And even though I thought for the current seasonal model, it was a pretty damn good season, a lot of you said that without Vault of Glass, it would have been one of the worst, but like, we did get Vault of Glass, so I don't know what to tell you. What I can tell you is that I haven't liked a single seasonal activity in Destiny since the Sundial back in Season of Dawn, and that's because Bungie spoiled their players with Menagerie in the Sundial and has yet to make something as fun to grind since. Hunts, Battlegrounds and now Override just aren't innovative or new, and if they're supposed to hook me for three months, this isn't looking too good. I think I'm also in a small boat that likes the story content, but doesn't like the pacing of the story or the drip feed that comes with the seasonal content. I say just let me grind at my own pace, and if I run out of things to do, that's on me. So with all of that out of the way, man, he must hate this season, right? Well, no, this was my first proper review, so I think I just need to give this season a rating and be firm on my thoughts about the content. I wouldn't be doing my duty otherwise. So, I am giving Destiny 2 Season of the Splicer 7 out of 10 eggs. I hope this connecting narrative takes off next season and we get something amazing going into the Witch Queen. If you guys did have any questions, comments, concerns, Drop them in the comments here or on my Patreon or on my Twitch. Also, my socials. Thanks again, everyone, for taking the time to watch this, and I will see you in the next video. Mm. What the actual fuck is this? Are we about to have the quickest wipe in history? I... Ah. Explain, hello? Explain, hello? Explain! <laughs> Bro! <laughs>